Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part one of my tutorial on how to make a PHP slash MySQL message board slash forum, whatever you want to call it. The reason I'm making this tutorial is this guy right here requested it. So this is kind of going to be a continuation of my web design and programming tutorial, in which I really focused on PHP and MySQL, and I provide links to both the beginning of that tutorial as well as a link to the specific part of that tutorial in which I start talking about MySQL and how SQL works. So whenever you're creating a message board or a forum system using PHP, the very first thing you have to do is create a database. Well, we're going to use MySQL, of course, and I'm going to need to create three tables inside of MySQL, one being users, one being message, and one being topics. Well, first thing I have to do is log in to MySQL, and here I am logged into MySQL. Clear the scroll back from there. And then to create a database, well, I'm going to uppercase everything that is a command in MySQL here for you so you can easily see what is an SQL command and what is not. I'm going to call this message board, spelled like that. Created that. Now if I want to use message board, I just type in use message board. Okay, super. Now what I have to do, because there's nothing in there, is create a table. And the first table I'm going to create is the table named users. Create table users. And in SQL, you're able to put this across multiple lines because you end your statement with a semicolon. And one thing I'm going to need, of course, is a user ID. And I'm going to make that of medium int size. And if this does not make any sense, check out the MySQL tutorial that I put up a second ago. I'm going to say that this has to contain a value. That's why the not null is there. And I'm going to put auto increment in here so that it automatically generates values. And I'm going to end out with a comma. And then everybody that's going to use this message board is going to have a username. And I'm going to give that a variable length of 30 characters, not and all. Again, not and all, forcing them to put something in. And then I'm also going to require them to have a password. And I'm going to make that 40 characters in the length, even though it's kind of insane. And let's change that to 30, not and all. And then they're also going to have to provide an email address. And a lot of these numbers are just kind of like guessing. And you just normally want to just guess based off of what you think will be the maximum number or the largest in length. And then I'm going to assign the primary key, the key that is going to represent each piece of data in this table as user ID. And then I'm going to close that off. And I made a little bit of an error there. See, I put the ID in there twice. Well, I want to get rid of that. So what I did was I hit up on my arrow key, and that's going to open up this little thing. It's going to be nice and handy. And I'm going to delete that little error that I made there. And that's great. And you can see just by typing D-E-S-C or describe, you could actually type out the whole entire thing. There is the nice little table that I just created. I'm going to clear my scroll back and create the next table. All right, so I have to create a table. And it's going to contain each individual message that is posted to my forum. So I'm going to have to create a message ID that's going to represent each one of those. Int, unsigned, not, null, and auto increment. Medium int, unsigned, not, null. And there we're going to store the user ID for whoever posted this message here on the screen. And then I decided to break everything into topics. So I'm going to create a topic ID, and I'm not going to have that many topics. I'm only going to have, I think, six, no, five. So I can use a tiny int here, more than enough. And then I'm going to have to store a subject. And I'm going to guess that subjects are only going to be 50 characters in length. And we're going to require that they always have a subject if they post a message. Otherwise, it's not going to make much sense. And then message text, which is going to be the actual message that they put in there. And I'm going to use long text not and all because it's not much of a message if they don't leave one and i'm also going to put a timestamp on here just going to record the precise moment in which they put the message on the message board that way i'll be able to better organize and put things in order based off of when they were posted and this might need a little bit of explanation i'm going to put a parent id and what this is going to do is allow me to track replies in regards to whether this message has a parent, meaning the parent would be the original message, whether this is actually a reply to that original message, because I'm going to give that capability to reply, because that's also something very common. And here I'm going to make the primary key message ID, and then you could also close it off like that. And you can see there's that table. It's a little bit messy because of the fact that I'm zoomed in so far. But that's what that guy looks like. Clear scroll back. And now I'm going to create my final table that I need. And it's going to be called Topics. And the reason why I'm doing this is to make this table normalized, meaning I don't want to have duplicate information in tables. 
and I explain that more in other tutorials. Tiny int. And I also want to make sure that the information that I have in one table is precisely the same as in all other tables. Variable number of characters, 50 in length. And since I'm going to be the one defining these topics, not anybody else, I can have this be whatever I want. Of course, you could provide people the option to do that. This form is basically just going to be set up in a way that's going to allow you to understand how it operates and then make changes from that point. It's not going to set the world on fire. And there is my topic table. Now, if I want to insert values into the topic table, that's easy enough. I just use the insert command into what table? Topics. And then I have to define what I'm going to insert specifically into, into this guy. Actually, let's go back. Okay, here's the topics table. So you can follow along as I actually insert information into this table. So I'm going to go insert into topics, which is the name of my table. And then I have to define specifically what cell in the table I want to insert into, and that's going to be topic. And then values, remember anything in uppercase letters is SQL. And then let's say that I want to insert news as a potential topic, strange, whatever strange would be, celebrity, politics. And let's just do one more and sports. And that with a semicolon. Now, if I would go select everything from topics, you can see all the information that I just put in there and it auto incremented and created individual IDs for everything on the screen for me. Okay, so let's create some users for my database. Now, normally this is going to be done through your PHP code, but here I just want to show you how that's done with MySQL because this is kind of a review of MySQL. So I'm going to type in username, password, email, close that off, type in values, and then let's just put in me, 12. So that's going to be my username. And then I want to generate an encrypted password. That's why I use this SHA function there. And then I'm going to enter in an email address. And I could actually come in here, put a comma, and create a couple more people. So let's say Susie Smith, one, two, SHA. And there you go. And if I want to take a look at all those people in there. Doink. You can see there's the encrypted password, there's the username, there's the email, and they all have user IDs that are all specific. And now on for something that's a little bit more complicated, inserting values into the message box. So insert into message, and I'm going to do user ID, topic ID, parent ID, subject, message, text, right like that. I put values on a separate line just because was forced to there. And then what this is going to be, user ID is going to be one. So it's actually going to be me. Topic ID is going to be four because that represents sports. And then I'm going to put zero in here because this is going to represent a message and not a reply to somebody else's message. Then, and this is total rambling nonsense, what is the best team? Opinion. And then, da, 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 da. And then to show you exactly what it would look like if somebody replied to this message, being Susie Smith, the only other user on here. Well, two is going to represent Susie Smith. Topic's going to be four, still talking about sports. And the parent is actually going to be zero, which is a reference to this message right here. So this is a reply. And you should probably, for your subject area, just automatically put in whatever the subject they were replying to was, or you could, of course, let them define that. And if you were a Steeler fan, that would definitely be something you'd put there. Select star from and you can see here all that information. There's the timestamp. There's the subject. Of course, it's messed up because I have everything sort of squeezed in this box. But there it is, a little bit smaller. You can see message ID, user ID, topic ID, subject. There's the message text, and there's the timestamp. It was automatically created for me. And the parent ID, meaning that it's a reference to the same exact message. Now, to finish this guy off, I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing again. And it's always smart to have indexes assigned to identification numbers because this allows you to very quickly make queries on your database. And really the only requirement is that these indexes be unique. So one thing that's going to be unique in the message table is going to be user IDs. If you want to add an index, just think about it as it's going to speed up everything. User ID, and you can even put a comma in here and put more of them in. Add what's going to be another part of the message table that's going to be unique. Well, topic ID is going to be unique, so put that in there. And then if you want to make the message part of the message table, the actual message people leave, easily searchable, you add full text capability to it. And let's say I want to do that to both the subject and the message text area. 
and that all works real nice. And then if I want to come in here and further alter the table for users and add a unique index for username and email to make sure that there are no duplicate usernames or emails, which would completely confound the system. That's exactly how I do that. And you can see how this would affect the database as a whole. That's all I have time for today. Up next, I'll show you how to integrate this database system through PHP scripts. Till next time.